And we're, uh, we're happy you're back. And we're real glad to have as our expert for the U test today, the author of the books, Why Men Are the Way They Are, and The Liberated Male. Please welcome Dr. Warren Farrell. May I call you Warren? Sure. Would you call me Dr. Jack? Sure, Dr. Jack. Well, <laughs> How are you? Why are men such Dr. Jacks? <laughs> We're happy that you could uh, be with us. Thank we you. We tried to get you here one time before in the fog. Uh, Kept the sound. Yeah. Okay, but we're, we're glad you made it. Thank you. Now, um, before we get going, how do you gather all this information? I, I was reading both of your books. I make it up. It's like yeah. Long. Yeah, I noticed that. See? <laughs> it's all up. We're going to uncover this today. How do you do that? You get... I have... Um, actually, I've had 106,000 women and men go through groups that I've done. Wow. And I have them each do something that simulates the socialization of the other sex, meaning like... Okay. Yeah, great. I have like examples. A, a man go through a men's beauty contest so that he understands what it's like to be rejected on the basis of his body alone. Or I have a woman go <laughs> You like that idea? What appeals to you? Stand up for a second. What appeals to you about that? It just, it's just the right thing to do. I, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but there are, the women that go through these things want to go through them, though. Mm -hmm. Well, what you're saying is it affects, every, it affects all these other women, too. Yes, like a woman often asks me, like, why, is, why are men such jerks? Or why is it that men are sort of so preoccupied with success? Or why can't men listen? So I ask them to go through a role reversal date where they ask a man out. In yeah. the, the process of doing that, they maybe reach over to kiss the man, and they're saying to themselves, gee, I wonder if I should hold his hand first, or should I reach over and kiss him in the cheek, or should I kiss him in the lips, and what happens if he refuses, and what happens if he accepts too much? In the process, they're not listening to a word the man is saying. Yeah, you know, and that sounds a little bit familiar to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for the years that I did that. But anyway, now, let's talk about how men feel about successful women. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what have you found about guys' feelings towards that? Well, I find that men are threatened by successful women, but one of the reasons they're threatened by successful women is because successful women tend to marry up. So most men feel they're going to be rejected by the successful woman because she either marries up or she doesn't marry at all. So if he isn't more successful than she is, he will be rejected, and therefore most people are threatened by being rejected. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Have you been rejected, Jack? <laughs> uh, I've been rejected once or twice, but, but not that much, Warren, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm pretty popular with the babes. <laughs> um, how, yeah, how does wage earning fit into a relationship? You've got a, a, a wife who earns more money than the husband. Has that changed? Because, you know, the old thing used to be that the guy had to be the breadwinner, and he was... Unfortunately, it hasn't changed. Basically, when people commit... In 1986, even though women are earning much more than they used to on the average, um, still when men and women commit, ideally the woman would still like to be able to have the man provide three options for her. The option to work full time if she wants to, the option for her to be able to be full time involved with the family if she wants to, or the option to be able to, for her to be able to juggle any of those other two as she would like to for however, for, for however long she would like to. She wants the man to provide these options. She ideally would like the man to be able to provide those three options for her, whereas he expects from her th three different types of options. The option to work full time, the option to work full time, or the option to... Uh, work full time? Work full time. Right. <laughs> I catch right on, don't I? So these aren't spoken options, though. I mean, you, you, That's know, right. you don't hear women say, say, I want to be able to... In order to, to commit, you have right. to, but... but the way the man hears that is very indirectly. For example, I teach at the medical school at UCSD, and male nurses will sometimes come up to me and say, you know, a woman comes up to me and she says, I'm warm and tender, and I, see, I look at this guy and he seems to be tall, and he's, he says he's heterosexual. And, um, <laughs> so the, um, and he says, you know, I'm very interested and attracted to this woman. And she says to me, I, I like the way you are, but can you get the doctor I'm going out with to be as loving as you are? And he picks up the hint, yeah. which is that if he's not the doctor, he can have a wonderful, warm, intimate personality, but he'll get rejected. Or when I go on a plane for a flight, the male flight attendant will tell me that the female flight attendant would rather go out with a pilot and complain about the obnoxiousness or self-centeredness of the pilot, uh -huh. if any pilots are listening, they're exceptions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Warren, that goes without saying. <laughs> and um, and th then go out with him, the male flight attendant. And so one of the reasons that gay men learn that they can take jobs like flight attendants or secretaries or male nurses, male nursing jobs, is uh -huh. because gay men don't have to support women. Okay, we have a phone call. Are you there? Yes, I am. How are you? Fine. You have I have a question? two questions. Okay. okay. <coughs> the first one is, why is it that the majority of better looking men cannot seem to stick with just one woman? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they have the options not to. 
And <laughs> um, when you got the options, you got to use them. That's all. There is. <laughs> That's a, a little bit flip, but um, part of it is is that the other part of it is that men get ba basically every man in America is addicted. That is, he's addicted to 26 million images per year of the attractive female who by the time he's in ninth grade basically has celebrity status. She gets that celebrity status by genetics. And, and why men are the way they are, I call her the genetic celebrity. Uh -huh. And he notices something about that attractive female, which is that the ninth grade female is not paying attention to the ninth grade boy. She's paying attention to who? Yeah, the 12th grade right. boy, the 11th grade boy. She's paying attention to the average 12th grade boy, the average 11th grade boy. Hero. She's paying attention to the football hero, the jocks. Right. And so what he, basically what he basically learns is, I am not equal to a woman. And I will be rejected by the attractive women that I am attracted to. So when he finally gets the option to not be rejected by her, he oftentimes fulfills his addiction. And he compulsively goes after her. And this isn't true? Conversely with women? No. If w women are much more likely to get messages that many women are attracted to men, but if a man gets to be 24, 25, and he's still good looking, but he hasn't done something with his looks, we say, what a waste. And the woman doesn't go chasing after him. And if she goes chasing after him, it's for one night, not for a long-term relationship. She doesn't bring home a male secretary to her mother or father and say, guess who I'm bringing home for Thanksgiving? I'm so proud of him. He's a secretary. Yeah. Um, she, she, and, and being good looking isn't good enough. The Marlboro man isn't good enough. He has to also be on the horse mastering the environment. So we as men learn it's fine to be good, good looking and it'll give us a little leverage for a little bit. But if we don't translate our looks into something, it's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Thank you for calling. We appreciate it. Oh, I call. have one more question. Okay, can you hang on for a second? We have yeah. to take a break, and we'll come back and take a question. We're going to come back with Warren Farrell in just a minute. So hang around. Call us if you'd like. We'd love to hear from you. Can you tell me why this is? Yeah, he's giving women what he, he, he thinks that they want. So, for example, the better looking man is more likely on the average to get signals from women about wanting to commit. And he knows that if he's going to be able to continue his fantasy of having sex with the, the woman he's attracted to, he'd better lie a little bit about commitment or exaggerate the extent to which he's involved. And so that's usually why he does that. I'm not agreeing that he should do that, but that's usually his motivation. Okay. Thanks very much for calling. I want to read a letter to you, Warren, that was in uh, Dear Abby, okay? And I think a lot of guys uh, here in the audience and at home are going to relate to this. Okay, Dear Abby, I am a nice, uh, nice looking, clean, personable, intelligent, sensitive fellow. Apparently he doesn't think that much of himself. I'm <laughs> 23, masculine but thin, have a good sense of humor and I'm friendly. He's also shy, insecure, and very, very lonely. Okay, I'm polite, have social skills, and I'm always first to offer my congratulations for an achievement. I offer compliments to others for their appearance. Uh, no one has ever congratulated me on my numerous achievements. Don't tell me to just be myself. I've been myself forever, and the only women who express any interest in me are either going steady, engaged, married, or over 60. Where did I go wrong? <laughs> now, is this guy being too sensitive? Is he uh, exposing too much of himself? Do women want to see that strong thing until they get involved and then say, oh, you can be a puppy dog, too? Amazing. It took Dear Abby a whole year to publish my letter. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> written very nicely, though, Warren. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice when, you ed when you edited it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. I, I really don't have enough information um, to answer that question, but I can say that he hasn't mentioned, he's mentioned numerous achievements, but if those achievements have been like going to graduate school or being, um, achieving internally, oftentimes men do find that they do get rejected, and, and he also mentioned shy and insecure. A man who goes to a party and is shy does not, unfortunately, have a lot of women come up to him and initiate with him. One of the, we often say there's a great American man shortage. One of the ways that women can find men who are available is to go to a party, look for the shy man like this who might be very warm and tender and loving and caring, yeah. initiate with him, ask him out, call him the next morning and offer him tickets to a play or a movie or to a football game. 
um, and that's and she will find a lot of men that um, are not normally available. Okay. Now here, what's your name? Carrie. Carrie. Mm -hmm. Would you ask a guy out like that? Have you ever done that? No. What would keep What would keep you from doing? It? Because I think he wasn't interested. I think he, you know, not knowing that he was shy, I would think he was an attractive man. Again, this, yes. is a, a, this is something that we're taught early on. And and now, is your name Carrie? Carrie. Carrie. Carrie doesn't have to do this now because she's very attractive and she's young. She's at the height of her genetic celebrity power. Congratulations. But if she's married for 20 years and then she goes out in the market again and she's 43 rather than 23, let's say, right. uh, the chances are fairly good she won't be so much at the height of her genetic celebrity power and she will ha be in a weaker position because she hasn't trained herself to do the initiating. More, see if this rings true for you, Carrie. A lot of times when guys come to you now, they're going to be saying to themselves at a party, boy, I'm not successful enough to be able to not, to, to be assured of not being rejected by you. The guys who do end up working their way past the barriers to get through you are oftentimes guys who perceive themselves as being fairly successful, but they've also guys that have learned to not take no's for, the, for an answer, which is what it takes to be successful. So you often end up, chances are, with guys who are fairly successful but somewhat jerky, um, because is that is that correct? Is this, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very. You can beat that game by initiating. That's the that's the reward you'll get for initiating. The the price you'll get for initiating is a lot more rejection. Everyone who initiates gets more rejection. Do you think that you could try it and and walk away without having your ego smashed? You no. Don't. I, I'm kind of shy myself, so. Yeah. So it would be hard. I just wait for you. somebody to come. But Carrie, wouldn't you like more control over your own life? Yeah. And wouldn't you like to get a guy that, the sensitive guy, like this guy that wrote, that wrote in, he is sitting at that party not able to go up to you and wishing he could. Yeah. And he often has, has internal values that are, in many respects, far more sensitive than the guy who's being able to beat past all the barriers to get to you. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah I understand. Isn't he worth it? Give it a try, I then. Guess. Give it a try the next time. We have another caller, I believe. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, how likely is it for a male who's steady, good looking, uh, he body builds, uh, and uh, uh, he looks uh, good that way, to be single that for means years? He doesn't have a nice looking face. Pardon? He doesn't he's, have a nice face. He's, he's um, okay. He looks sort of like Robert Redford. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, to be right. single for years. <laughs> okay. To be single for years, and then to be faithful to one person, because he was such a. Um, um, a bar person, you know, he would go out a lot and stuff. And her question is... So you're asking My question is, how, how, what, what's the um, rate of, of men that have that kind of background and then be faithful to one person and say, are they more likely, I'm going to stop that now. Are they more likely, likely to run around than other guys? Yeah, it's very hard um, because basically the man is, men in general, are activating their sexuality and they make some decision basically and that is if I'm not very good looking and I don't have much to go for me I'll, well, I'll, I'll have a lot going for him. no exactly <laughs> but when a guy does have a lot going for him the chances are he's been fairly successful with women and his fantasy is to have access to attractive women Playboy and Penthouse is still the number one and two best selling yeah. magazines in the United States for men and he can begin to have that and when he commits he basically says I'm committing to give up that fantasy of access to attractive women. Right. When you commit, you're saying, I'm committing to getting my fantasy of, play, of, of, um, of better homes and gardens and family circles. So commitment means something very different to a man than yeah. it does to a woman. And so your basic question is, is can he give it up? Yeah. And the answer is, it's going to be tough. And most men who do give it up, give it up because they feel really understood and appreciated and loved and catered to. And there's a, a fairly active sexuality at home. Yeah. And keeping an active sexuality at home is a very difficult thing because most relationships become basically like incest relationships. I talk in, in Why Men Are the Way They Are about a marital incest taboo that sort of sets in. People become like brother and sister with each other after a while. Right. But it's I can't elaborate in the show on how to make it a little bit better that way. Okay. Maybe afterwards, okay. and that's one of the advantages of coming down and seeing the show live. <laughs> <laughs> now. Um, the point you make in your book is that their man's uh, number one fantasy is sex. Sex with as many partners as he can get, right? Actually, yes. Both sexes have what I call a have-it-all fantasy, Jack. Both sexes would like warmth, tender, vulnerability, openness from their partner, to be understood, to have an attractive person, to have economic security. But men feel deprived of access to the attractive women, and women feel deprived of economic security. Okay. So women tend to fall in love with the man who can provide that, and men tend to fall in love with the attractive women, and then they both find themselves 
with problems with the person who is the attractive woman and the man who is a successful man. Okay, you have a problem, I think, with the, uh, the woman's fantasy, which Warren says in his book is to be cared for and to be secure. I, no, I agree with that. I just think, don't you think that men fool around more because they don't take sex as seriously as women do? I mean, to men, there's a place to come, well, except for him. <laughs> <laughs> We've started a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think that men would, would turn to you and say, well, it didn't mean anything. You know, I, oh, I slept with, you know, these 12 women, but it was just sex. Where a woman's going, what do you mean it was just sex? Again with uh, Warren Farrell, and we're discussing uh, men and <laughs> why men are uh, like they are. Uh, we have a bunch of phone calls. If we don't get to you today, because we have a lot of people in the audience that want to comment too, we thank you for calling. Please call back. Better still, come down and watch the show. You can get tickets by calling 916-325-3285, and you can be part of the festivities: the dancing, the cheese snacks, the strawberry quick. It's all happening. And today we're finding out why guys are jerks, apparently. But. Uh, um, you know, a comment that you made in your book that really hit home was the fact that advertising still portrays women as being all fluffy and all tender and flowing, and, and you made a comment that hardly ever do you see in women's magazines a computer ad, how they can make their business better, but everything is geared toward, even the magazines that are uh, supposedly liberated, yes. are still yes. makeup, uh, hair, whatever. I was astonished when I, was, when I looked at Ms. Magazine that way and, um, and the New Woman Magazine and the Working Woman Magazines, it's still about 80% of the ads in those magazines are oriented toward makeup, cosmetics, um, some way, fashion, some way of making the woman look beautiful yeah. and attractive. And it throws, you know, it throws me off. I think to myself, geez, well, I'm not being a sensitive mm -hmm. 80s guy. And well, then you don't, and then I think, Gee, it's me, it's me. Yes. I'm a jerk, I'm an idiot. <laughs> and, and, it, <laughs> and then you're thumbing through these magazines and you're seeing all these babes all made up and you're thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you think, well, I have to. I, have I remember to going down. through the uh, Ms. Ad, uh, Ms. ads and seeing, for example, ads in Ms. magazine in which it said um, there was a, a diamond being given by a man to a woman. Right. And right. then two years later, there was the same diamond ad being given by a man to a woman, but the only thing was that the diamond had doubled in its size. Right. I remember that. <laughs> we have, uh, you folks are the married couple that we're going to talk to, right? right. This is uh, Bob and Dee Dee. Nope. No? That's up here. Okay. <laughs> you guys are Cindy and, say yes, no matter what. <laughs> Cindy and Pat. Right. right. There you go. I knew I had them. Okay. We asked um, people to write down comments about um, how they felt about each other. And Cindy says that she gets confused when men can go out and spend hundreds of dollars on toys for themselves and then come home and gripe about their wives spending too much money for groceries. While Pat says, my wife would like me to be a mind reader, and when I'm not, she feels hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we've started it now, Warren. 
Now, is this a typical feeling between people that uh, the women that yes, guys? yes, it is fairly typical, and um, and men do need to spend a lot more time tuning in to women's feelings. Um, women and women need to spend a lot more time asserting and saying exactly what they do feel, but. Women often get thrown off by that because they oftentimes they articulate to their women friends what they feel, and they come back and articulate to a man what they feel and expect. And the woman friend has no defense mechanisms because she doesn't have any investment in having to obey those feelings. Uh, whereas you might be in the middle of an argument with your husband and then mention something that you've been talking to your woman friend five or six times, and in a way it feels to you like the seventh time that you've mentioned it to him. He doesn't pick it up on the same level that you say it at, and you say to your woman friend, God, you understand me better than my husband understands me, and that increases your alienation toward your husband. And so one of the things that I really work on a lot with, with women is A, articulating their feelings clearly, and then B, rather than repeating them, ask their husband to articulate back to them what you think that, he, that you said and what your best intent was. Is that at all helpful? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, good. It's clear, but I think it's hogwash. Okay, but don't you think? I'm sorry. Tell me why. Well, because what you said about having women friends, women do understand other women much, much better, much, much easier. You can only say you can say it one time to another woman; mm -hmm. she'll know exactly what you mean. You know, your husband doesn't have any idea. But what that's you're what he's about. that's what he's saying. Right. But is that I she can understand, understand you so much easier, and you go home and say it to him, and he might have a hard time fathoming what you're saying. And to you, it's frustrating because. Your woman friend understands it right away, and he doesn't, and you just figure, oh, I've had it. I don't even want to talk to you about that. S Cindy, you and I really are talking the same length. For example, if a woman says to a w another woman, he's afraid of intimacy, he's afraid of commitment, immediately that means to the other woman the same thing as it means to you. If you say that to a man, he doesn't know what to say about that because he knows that intimacy, commitment doesn't necessarily mean intimacy. From his perspective, commitment means, for example, providing enough economic options to give you the ability to either work at home or to, to work in, at full time or to do some combination of, the, of both. And commitment means him providing economic security. And that's just one example of the reason why more discussion is needed with the man than it is with your women friends because you and your women friends have similar translations of words and men and women unfortunately are really given divorce training they don't have similar translations okay. where is um aaron rumsey where are you aaron let me jump in front of this there you are okay now i'm going to give you the microphone and i want you to read this card but i don't want to be near you when you read it <laughs> because i don't feel good. We're, we're almost out of time aaron. so why don't you read what you wrote on your card for us when women want to have equal rights but don't want to work as hard Mm -hmm. When women want equal rights, they'll work as hard as dead. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. I'm gonna, yeah, and the guys are up here applauding. You know, folks, this is the kind of thing that makes happy television. We're almost out of time for today. <laughs> we are out of time. We're getting the wraps in. We want to thank uh, Warren Farrell for being with us and being such a great guest today. Thanks, Warren, for being here. <laughs> I want to thank everybody uh, who is at home watching today. Tomorrow, stuff in your purse. What it says about you. TV to your travel news. How to get along with a smoker if you don't smoke. Thanks very much for watching. See you tomorrow. Have fun.